Our speaker, Travis Dennison. Sell off. Sell off. Travis Dennison. Three different people had three completely different reactions when I told them what I wanted to do. The first person was my sister Janet. Janet was happy for me. I think she was even a little bit jealous. Next was my friend Jim. I've known Jim for a long time. I knew Jim before I looked like Anderson Cooper. <laughs> Jim called me a psychopath. Finally, a guy at work, his hands began to tremble and he broke out into a cold sweat. You might be wondering, what in the world was it that I was going to do that could draw such a variety of reactions from these people in my life? I told them I was going to be turning off my cell phone for two weeks. Mr. Contest Master, my fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, if you're like me, the connection to your phone has changed over the years. What may have started out as an innocent flirtation with technology has now blossomed into a full-blown relationship. This device, which was once just an accessory, now feels more like an appendage. It's been so long since I've been without a phone that I've forgotten what it was like. And that got me curious. I wanted to see how many habits had I developed over the years that I was completely oblivious to. And the only way to find out was to go without. And so it began one Saturday morning. I woke up that day and the first thing I did was reach for my nightstand trying to find my phone. I hadn't been awake for even 15 seconds, and I had already identified one of my habits. I couldn't just lie there in bed and look at the headlines, check my email, walk through social media. No, I had to do what they did in the olden days when they woke up on Saturday morning. I had to get out of bed. I was meeting a woman at a local restaurant that morning, so I got ready, I left the house, I get to the restaurant, and I'm seated, and I'm enjoying the morning's first cup of coffee. And I wait. And I wait. I have no idea what time it was. I stopped wearing a watch years ago. Who needs a watch when you always have your phone with you? I didn't realize it at the time, but the woman was going to be about 30 minutes late. She sent me a text. I never got it. <laughs> so I just sat there with nothing to do. And that's when I absorbed my environment. I saw a young toddler standing up in his booth, looking at the elderly couple behind him. He looked at them, they looked at him, smiles on all their faces. I could hear music coming from the kitchen, and a woman with the most beautiful voice was singing a song in a language that I didn't understand. The servers walked by with food on their trays, and I could smell the aroma of a dozen different meals. I didn't need everything that my phone had to offer to occupy my mind. I had everything right there in that restaurant. All I needed to do was to see it, to hear it, and to smell it. A couple of days into this two-week experiment, I began to realize that being without a phone didn't just impact me personally, but it had an effect on those people around me as well. And it gave some of them license to make fun of me. I get home from work, my son comes up to me, Dad, Dad, we need to go to the grocery store. We're out of everything. We need milk, we need cereal, we need butter. Oh, wait a second. We don't need butter. You can churn your own now, can't you? <laughs> a 
a guy at work comes up to me, complete exasperation on his face. Travis, Travis. <sighs> Travis, I'm so glad I found you. I saw your horse tied up in the parking lot. <laughs> you better get him some water because he looks pretty thirsty. I get an email from a friend. Hey, are the 1850s over? I need to speak with you. I responded to that email with three words, a thumbs down emoji. <laughs> As I got to the end of this 14 day journey, I began to reflect on everything that I learned, felt, and experienced. And while it was quite obvious the items in my life that my phone had replaced, from a, a wristwatch to an alarm clock and everything in between, what really spooked me was how it was beginning to replace my attention and my focus. And I didn't like that. Being without a phone changed me. I gained back about 30 minutes each day that I could choose to use however I wanted. All the noise and messages that would bombard me day in and day out were now washed away before they even reached the shore. And for the first time in a very long time, I could truly focus on those people most important in my life. I would like to encourage you all to go on your own journey. If not for two weeks, maybe just two days. And you'll realize that you don't need everything that your phone has to offer to occupy your life. You have everything right where you are. And maybe you too will see it, hear it, and smell it. Mr. Contest Master.